Praise the Lord, my sisters and brothers. I'm your sister in Christ, Michelle Rice. And this is the prayer connection where you make connection with God. Yes, this is now the prayer connection where you make a connection with heaven. Now, this show is designed to build you up, to strengthen you, and to encourage you to go into another level in your prayer life. Yes, it's designed by God to catapult you and to launch you forward into another level in your prayer life. And we know that it's all done by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh God, we bless you, Lord God. We praise your holy name. We magnify your holy name, God. We give you all the glory and all the praise. We bless you. We praise you. Father God, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be thanked, God. You are worthy to be worshipped. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are worthy to be lifted up, God. You are worthy to be honored and adored. You are worthy to be magnified. Father God, you are worthy all by yourself. You deserve you deserve all the praise. You deserve all the glory. You deserve, you deserve all the credit, God. You deserve it, God. And we bless you. Father God, we come boldly to the throne of grace today. We need your help today. Oh God, we need help today. The whole world needs your help today. Everybody, every boy, every girl, every man, every woman, every institution, every organization, every school system, the government needs you. Families need you, Lord God. We need you. Father God, we, we come to you because we we need you. We realize we are in need. We are a people that's in need, God. So we come into the only help we know. Jesus Christ, you are the only help we know. In Jesus' name. So we trusting in you, relying on you, putting our faith in you and hoping on you, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh God, we glorify you. Oh, Father God, we rely on the Holy Spirit today to pray through us. We will land on the Holy Spirit today like never before. We need your Holy Spirit to pray through us, speak through us, minister through us to your people today in the name of Jesus. Father God, we glorify you. We magnify your name. Oh God, we glorify you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We magnify your name, God, in Jesus' name. Father God, we live in a perilous times. The word of God said, he said, he said the perilous time shall come. We are in perilous times right now, Father God. We are in perilous times right now, Father God. In Jesus' name. We in perilous times, challenging times, tumultuous times, troublesome times, and difficult times. Yes, we are in perilous times right now. The whole globe, the whole planet, the whole cre all your creation are in perilous times because the Bible said the perilous times shall come and we are in perilous times right now in these last days, God. But even though we are in perilous times, Father God, in Jesus' name, our God is greater than the times. Our God, you are Father God. You're greater than the times. You're greater than perilous times. You're greater than tumultuous times. You're greater than unprecedented times. You're greater than challenging times, God. You are greater and greater and greater is he that's within us than he that is in the world. I'm here, here to tell you today, we, we might be living in some challenging times, but our God, your God, is greater than the times. He's greater than the unemployment rate. He's greater than the coronavirus. He's greater than sickness and disease. He's greater than social unrest. He's greater than bigotry and racism. He's greater. He's greater. We live in perilous times, but our God is greater than the times. And he said that your life and times is in his hands. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. Now, saints, the word of God for today on our broadcast of the Prayer Connection is located in Mark eleven twenty three. Hope you got your word out, got your Bible out. Always follow along when the preacher preaches. Always follow along in your word when the teacher is teaching you to make sure they're saying the right thing, to make sure it's authenticated, make sure it's in the book. Amen. That's that's using wisdom in these last days. Don't just take everybody's word for granted. Don't take my word for granted. Don't take the preacher's word for granted. I love the preacher, but don't take his word for granted. I love the lead. I love our leadership. But don't take your leadership for. Don't take your their word for carte blanche. Follow along with that word. Make sure what they say is in that book, and you won't go astray. You want your life to be founded 
founds it, your foundation to be the word of God. In Jesus name. So Mark eleven twenty three 23 reads, let's read it in Jesus name. It says, whoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. But shall believe those things that he say shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he says. Now, I know you say, I know that scripture, Sister Michelle. I read that thing a thousand times. Never get familiar with the word of God. Never get familiar with that, with the scriptures. Because in that one scripture, God can speak volumes. In that one scripture, it can be layers upon layers upon layers upon layers of revelation. Never get familiar with the word of God. God always has a fresh viewpoint, a fresh light. It's facets and facets of glory in that one scripture. And it's and so is it in Mark eleven twenty three. 23. He tells us, whoever shall sing unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, but thou doubtest in his heart, but believe those things that he says should come to pass, he should have whatever he says. So in other words, Jesus was teaching his disciples that they could speak to mountains, speak to things that seem unsurmountable, things that seem so grand and so big in our lives, something that you it feels unmovable. He was teaching them how to speak to mountains. In other words, could I say, he was teaching them to speak to inanimate objects, He's, he's telling us, speak to your mountain. And he's telling us today the same thing. Speak to your mountain. Speak to your circumstances and situation. Speak to your trial and tribulation. Speak to your perils and problems. Speak to it. Speak to your adversities and afflictions. Speak to the mountain. You have the authority to speak to mountains. Speak to inanimate objects. Your trials isn't alive. It's not a person or a human being. or But it's an inanimate object. Just speak to it. In other words, don't just talk about your problems. Speak to your problems. Don't just talk about the situation. Speak to the situation. Don't just talk about the circumstance. Speak to the negative circumstance. Speak to it. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, you told them in your word in Mark eleven twenty three, that whosoever should say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and don't doubt in your heart, but believe those things that you say shall come to pass. You will have whatever you say. So, Father God, we receive that word. We thank it today that you are deputizing us and authorizing us to speak to mountains. You are authorizing us and deputizing us to speak to mountains, speak to inanimate objects. You give us authority to speak to our circumstances and situation. We've been deputized and authorized from heaven to speak to these inanimate objects, to speak to mountains. In the name of Jesus, we speak to the coronavirus, the coronavirus spirit. We speak to it in the name of Jesus. We command it to drive up and die in the name of Jesus. You give us authority to speak to inanimate objects. You give us authority to speak to mountains. You give us authority to speak to demons and demonic powers. And we speak to the coronavirus spirit. We command it to dry up and die in the name of Jesus. Be thou removed off the face of the earth. Be off. Be be thou removed off of the planet. Be thou removed off of planet Earth in the name of Jesus. We command the coronavirus spirit to. to just to dry up in Jesus' name. Dry up to be annihilated, disintegrated in Jesus' name and blown to smithereens. We decree that thing in the name of Jesus. When you speak into mountains, speak into your circumstances and situations, you speak to it in the name of Jesus. Don't just talk about your problems. Speak to your problem. Don't just talk about your situations. Speak to it in the name of Jesus. Speak to it in Jesus name. Hallelujah. You see, we are spirits. I know you see me, see my, see my, this body, but my, this is not the real me. Our outward man is not the real us. The inward man, our spirit is the real person. It's the real us. We, so therefore the real us, we are spirits. 
We, we, we are spirits. We dwell in the body and we possess a soul. You are a spirit that dwells in this earthly tabernacle, this body, but you are a spirit, just like God is a spirit. The Bible says God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God is a spirit and we are made in his image and after his likeness. So we are spirit beings too. And as a spirit being, he made us speaking spirits. He didn't make us to be quiet and to allow the circumstances and situation to run over us, to allow demonic powers to run over us. He given us a mouth to speak in Jesus' name. We are speaking spirits that speak in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Isaiah 41, 1, Keep silence before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Keep silence before me, O island, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let us come near together to judgment. Let's read that again, Isaiah 41, 1. Keep silence before me, O island. This is God talking. He said, keep silence before me, O island, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near. Let them speak. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let us come together into judgment. Let them speak. So when you speak in the word of God, and you speak into your mountains, you speak into demonic powers, you speak into inanimate objects, when you're speaking to your bank account and commanding, commanding it to be filled. When you're speaking to body parts and commanding them to be whole and healed. When you're speaking to your credit report commanding it to be fixed. When you're speaking to your marriage and you command it to be restored. When you're speaking to your business commanding it to be prosperous. When you're speaking these words you're not just out there on your own the bible says isaiah 41 let them come near then let them speak isaiah as isaiah 41 says let them come near then let them speak god said let them come near then let them speak so when you're speaking these things you are in the presence of god speak of them and heaven backs you up in the name of jesus christ so god has authorized us and deputized us to speak to be speaking spirits that speak in the earth realm, that decrees and declare. How do you speak? You can speak many ways. You can just decree and declare like I did earlier. I decree a thing and so shall it be. I decree and declare over you today that God will keep you by his spirit for you are kept by the power of God. I decree and declare that no weapon formed against you and your family will prosper. In Jesus' name, I decree and declare that by his stripes you are healed today. In Jesus' name, I decree and declare that you have a sound mind, that God's not giving you the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. I decree it and declare it in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, you are a speaking spirit that can decree and declare. The Bible says, decree a thing and so shall it be. So we are speaking spirits that speak. We decree and declare. We decree and declare. We decree and declare. Not only are we speaking spirits that decree and declare, we are speaking spirits that prophesy. You have the anointing to prophesy. Just like Ezekiel. Remember in Ezekiel 37? When it was a valley of dry bones? And God asked Ezekiel, he said, Ezekiel, shall these bones live again? And Ezekiel said, Father God, you know, you know God. Then God told Ezekiel, prophesy to them dry bones. So it's the same way God authorized and deputized Ezekiel to prophesy. He's authorizing you and deputizing you to, to, to prophesy too. The gift of prophecy and the anointing to prophesy is not just for the prophet. It's for all the children of God to prophesy to your situation. We prophesy to that bank account that's dried up. 
and be commanded in Jesus to be replenished in the name of Jesus. God is supplying all of our need according to his riches and glory by Christ. I prophesy right now. Jesus said that God will replenish your bank account. He will replenish it in Jesus name. He will replenish it in Jesus name. No good thing will he withhold for them who walk uprightly. We prophesied that in Jesus' mighty name. We prophesied that he withhold no good thing to those who walk uprightly. We prophesied in Jesus' name. I prophesied to your family that they'll be kept by the power of God. I prophesied that in Jesus' mighty name. We prophesied. So we are speaking spirits that have been deputized and authorized to speak in the earth realm. We speak. We decree and declare. We prophesy in Jesus' mighty name. So not only are we speaking spirits that prophesy, decree, and declare, but you already know you are speaking spirit that pray. You pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. Your prayers are powerful. Your prayers are powerful. You pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So you are speaking spirit that's been authorized and deputized to decree and declare. You are authorized and deputized to prophesy in Jesus' mighty name. You are deputized and authorized to pray, to talk to the Father. The Father that controls everything. You can pray to the Father that controls everything. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. We glorify his name. So, Father God, we bless you. We praise you, oh God. We're going to quit talking about our problems. And speak to our problems. God wants us to quit talking about our problems and speak to our problems in the name of Jesus. Speak to those mountains in the name of Jesus. Prophesy to our situations in the name of Jesus. Decree and declare over our lives the word of God in the name of Jesus. And so shall your word be that go forth out of your mouth. It will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish what he pleases and prosper to through the thing to where he send it in the name of Jesus. We got to speak, saints. It's not time to be mute. It's not time to put our mouth on mute. It's not time to be dumb. <clears throat> now, I'm, I'm not being offensive when I say dumb. Dumb does not mean ignorant or stupid. Dumb means it's a mouth issue. Your mouth is closed. You're not speaking. Don't be dumb. Speak. Don't be, don't be a dumb person. Don't, don't be dumb. Dumb is just a condition where the person doesn't can't speak. And I decree and declare, I remove in Jesus' name that dumb spirit out of your life. In Jesus' name, I take the, your mouth off and mute in the name of Jesus Christ. You will be a speaking spirit. They'll speak to mountains, who should ever, to say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he said should come to pass, he would have whatever he say, in Jesus' name. We are speaking spirits, deputized and authorized to speak, and, and take dominion and subdue in this earth realm, in Jesus' name. Example of that is in Matthew 8. The centurion had a sick servant. He said, Jesus, can you, I'm paraphrasing, can you heal my servant? And then, then the centurion said, you know what, Jesus, I'm not even worthy enough for you to come under my roof to heal my servant. I'm not worthy for you to come in my house. Don't even come in my house. Just speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. He recognized that Jesus was a speaking spirit. He recognized that he was deputized and authorized to speak. He said, so he said, Jesus, don't come, don't come to my house. Just speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Jesus spoke and the servant was healed. You can do it too. For you are made in God's image and after his likeness. You have authority to speak in Jesus' name. You been to have authority to speak in Jesus' name. And I believe in Psalms 107, chapter 107, verse 20. Psalms 107, verse 20. It says that God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. 
He sent his word and healed them. So right now, we just like we're going to be going to do like the Bible says do. And Psalms 107, 20, we send in the word in Jesus. And we sent the, we send the word for healing right now in your family. Those that are suffering with this coronavirus, those that are suffering with cancer, those that are suffering with hypertension, those that are suffering with, with heart ailments and heart issues, those that are suffering with mind problems and mental challenges, and those that are suffering any type of sickness and disease. We send a word in Jesus name. We send the word so they can be healed in Jesus name. The Bible said he sent his word and healed them in Jesus name. We send in the word right now to your family members. We send in the word to the ICU units. We send in the word to the hospitals. We send in the word to your loved ones. We send in the word to your house. I'm sending a word in Jesus name that by his Jesus stripes you are healed today. Jesus took your infirmity. He bore your sins and diseases and with this stripe you are healed today by his stripes oh he said you serving the Jehovah Rophe the Lord thy God that healeth thee as we send the word the Lord thy God that healeth thee the, that God he's healing you of your infirmities he's healing you from your sins and diseases he's healing your lungs from the congestion he living your breath from the cancer in Jesus name hallelujah we thank you Lord God you sent your word and healed them the same way you spoke the word to, to the centurion's servant and he was healed and psalms 107 verse 2 says let the redeemed of the lord say so whom the lord hath redeemed from all their enemies let the redeemed of the lord say so you are the if you are born again believer you are the redeemed of the lord and the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You got to say something. Quit just talking about your problems and speak to your problems. You are the redeemed of the Lord. Say so. Say so. Say something. Quit looking at the situation and say something. And sometimes we run into God. Oh, God, do this. Oh, God, do that. Oh, God, help me, help me, Jesus. And God is saying, what are you doing? I've deputized you and authorized you to speak to mountains. You speak to it. Jesus said, it is finished. Jesus said, it is finished. I've given you authority. I've given you authority and power in Jesus' name. Luke 10, 19 says, I give you power over all the power of the enemy and nothing my enemies will hurt you. Luke 10, 19 says, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. Yes, the enemy got power, mm -hmm, but he's not giving you power over his power. Or oh, one translation says, I give you authority over his power. He got power, but God's I give you authority over his power. Your authority trumps power. Authority is greater than power. You have authority over his power. So quit, we got to quit running to God for stuff and take authority. Because God's sitting back saying, some things I've given you to put in your hand to speak it, speak it out. I give you authority to speak in the earth realm, to subdue it, to have dominion. And some things we're praying about, we need to speak to it. Some things we're praying about, and God's looking at you and saying, will you please use your authority? Will you please open up your mouth? Don't be mute. Don't be dumb. Don't be, don't be silent in this season. Quit asking me to do what I told you to do. You do it. Quit sure. We got to quit shirking our responsibility. And take authority. So, Father God, forgive us, God, for some things we have to just take authority. Some things we pray about and something we just take authority over. Some things we pray about and some things we decree and declare. Some things we pray about and some things we just prophesy. There's a time and a season for everything under the sun. There's a season to pray. And you should pray. I'm not taking it away from you. God's not taking it away from you. You pray when it's time to pray. But when it's time to prophesy, you prophesy. When it's time to decree and declare, you decree and declare. When it's time just to speak to the thing, take, do that. When it's time to check a demon and rebuke a demon and ban the demon and loose the demon, you do that. It's a time to seize of everything. And the Holy Spirit will let us know when it's time to pray. Talk to the Father in the name of Jesus when it's time to prophesy, when it's time to decree and declare, when it's time to check a demon and rebuke it. It's a time of the season for everything. And all of it deals with our mouth. We are speaking spirits that speak because God is the spirit 
He's a speaking spirit. He said, let there be, let there be, let there be, let there be. And it was, let there be a God that speaks, a spirit that speaks. We are made in his image after his likeness. We are spirit beings that speak and we have authority in the name of Jesus. So we're going to quit just talking about our problems all day long. We're going to speak to our problems. We're going to quit texting about our problems and speak to the problem. We're going to quit emailing the problem. And speak to the problem. We're going to quit snapchatting. Is it they call it snapchat? We're going to quit snapchatting the problem. And speak to the problem. We're going to quit complaining about the problem. And speak to the problem. And when we do that. The Bible says it will be removed. In Jesus name. According to Mark 11. 11 23. Whoever shall say unto this mountain. Be thou removed. And be thou cast in the sea. And don't doubt his heart. But believe what he says should come to pass. He will have whatever he says. In Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. We are speaking spirits. In Jesus name. Father God we thank you Lord. We praise your holy name. We give you all the glory God. In Jesus name. Amen. Now. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you have to use your mouth for salvation. Do you know that? Even though salvation is prepared for you, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but may have everlasting life. He's provided a way out. He's provided a way from eternal damnation. He's provided a way out of hell. He's provided the way Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. But you got to say something. It says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. You can't think it. You can't just read it. You can't hear somebody else say it. It can't just be in your heart. You got to confess that thing. If you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If you, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, they got raised from the dead. You will be saved. So you have to confess. You got to use your mouth again. You got to use your mouth. Because I'm going to lead you in a prayer. But use your mouth. He's deputizing you and authorizing you to open your mouth and pray this prayer with your mouth. The confession got to come out of your mouth. I can't pray salvation on you. You got. I can lead you, but you got to pray. it. So come on. Let's pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm a sinner. Come on, repeat it. I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I come to you. You said in your word that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead, I will be saved. So with my mouth, I just confessed it. And with my heart, I believed it in Jesus' name. Now, if you pray this simple prayer with your own mouth, you confess. And with your own heart, you believe. And if you did say that simple prayer, simple prayer, your name right now has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are a child of the Most High God. You are a born again believer. You are a Christian. You are a follower of Jesus. You are his, one of his disciples. You, his, well, you are one of his little ones. You are one of his beloved. You are one of the apple of his eye. He loves you. He loves you. He died for you. And now because you receive him as, as, your, pers as, as your personal Savior, he can work in your life. A couple of things I would tell you to do as a born again believer. Because you are born again. You are a child of God. Talk to God. Use your mouth. You've been deputized and authorized to speak. Pray. Pray to God. He's deputized you. Authorized you to open your mouth and pray. So you're praying to God. Get a good Bible. Please read the Bible. It's your, it's your, it's your, meat and, it's your bread and water. It's your milk and honey. It's your meat and drink. Read the Bible. Start reading in the New Testament. I will admonish you. So you're praying, reading, reading the Bible, and ask God to lead you to a place with other believers. Many churches are open. Some are not. You can even join up in this season of time that we're in on a good church that may, may be online. They may be on television. This you need. In other words, try to get up, get with other believers until the church doors open all over the all over this planet. Maybe you can go get a Zoom 
a Zoom meeting online and just sit there under this anointing with other believers. It's still a gathering. The church is not the building. The church is you. We are the church. So join yourself with other believers. You're praying, reading your word, and joining yourself with other believers. And obey the word that you read, too. When you read the Bible, obey it. Don't be a doer. Don't be just a hearer of the word. Be a doer. Don't just hear the word. Be a doer. Don't just hear the word. Be a doer. In Jesus' name, I welcome you into the body of Christ. Amen. Well, I will see you next time on the Prayer Connection, where we make a connection with God. I will see you next time on the Prayer Connection, where we make a connection with heaven. Bye-bye. Love you. And most of all, our God loves you. Bye-bye. <laughs>